send out a petition, even a simple petition like Avaz, for people that have lived there or participated and been active community people. They're ambivalent about whether or not to oppose this. So yeah. it's a complicated thing because it basically looks like you're doing an environmental thing. And when in fact you're flooding a, a, an environment that has many, many other concerns that will be swept away, that we're ignoring cultural concerns, community involvement and engagement. What is the return to the community? You're populating the entire, a huge area of islands that were quite small with, with so many. And the issue is also the per percentage with which is being forced down the throat of residents and visitors where, where these things are going to be placed. I was you told see? by people that work at the Bay that there was a national plan, plan uh -huh. where they investigated switching to wind power by utilizing islands that had no habitation, mm -hmm. okay? Because this mm -hmm. is a logical yeah. way to kind of pursue creating sure. an alternate plan. So yeah. when I spoke with people from the many groups that are on Paros, yeah. because I, I have come and gone and I've been away for a bit, yeah. and they were, everybody's frantically trying to get everything rolling, yeah. and people were paying attention to this because the minute the academic community had come and assessed that there was space for a hundred of these things, people flipped out. Okay, they, they really flipped out and everyone said, no, 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 don't worry, it'll never happen. And at that point, there already had been the installation of wind plants on different tops of very specific places. It's not everywhere. Okay, so it's not only going to be 100, it's going to be 100 plus what you already have. So what's, what's going to happen now is instead of utilizing that plan that the they had come up with, it's, since it's a private organization, corporation that invested in this plan, I can speak for Paros, I won't speak for anywhere else. I they, in the past, when they did that plan, yeah. they were choosing to put the things on islands that had yeah. no people on them, Yeah. okay? Oh, uh -huh. So if the whole island is occupied with a bulk of people whose economy is living off of tourism and... Well, that, that's obvious. Okay, so once you bring these things there and there are hundreds of them, or a hundred of them on an island, yeah. mine is not that big an island, all right? You, if you look at the map of how many places it's going to be, it's going to be everywhere. Okay? There's only one sort of corner of the island that won't have so much activity. So when people went to question that, and I know that mayors on the islands that are affected have tried to create, there's um, prefectures of the Aegean that are trying to challenge this immediately. But there are many groups, like yesterday I'm in a lot of different groups on the island that I live, and I, I know people that have run for the Green Party, and I notice some of it is ambivalent about what to do. Because if you were working on environmental causes, yeah. then you might not really want to come out swinging against a wind power company. In point of fact, what I had started to say is that there are many, many people who've taken their private, that the, at one point, the, the electric company of Greece, they offered plans subsidized. in which you could be subsidized for putting on uh, solar panels and different kinds of things, to, and then to even move it up another level that you would be selling energy back to the electric company. Right. Clearly, as the crisis has unfolded, those plans have been curtailed. Almost at the beginning. Okay, stopped. as well, if we're really going to look at practically in terms of places where these things are in action, you actually, in, it's not a theoretical thing, it's already happening as we speak. So people already have windmills attached to their houses that are small and petite and generating the energy for their homes. Most people already have solar, solar panels on their house because of all kinds of, I can't speak for elsewhere, but I know where, where I live, there was all kinds of efforts to institute the benefit to doing that to your property if you did any kind of development. So all those things are in place. There was already the institution of doing some of these solar windmills in specific places. Solar they, windmills? Okay, uh, not, I mean windmills, wind turbine generated energy. At this moment in time, in the Aegean, there is an effort to install enormous amounts of windmills on small islands that have ancient histories and fundamentally operate from economies based on tourism and their beauty and are known around the globe for that. So they should not be inundated with 100 wind turbines. There are ample, ample islands in, in, the, in the country of Greece to be installing these things. The main argument against that is it's cost effective for these people to use the infrastructure that is already there to create what looks like an industrial environment. I'm sorry I didn't come with pictures and maps. 
where you see how many of these things are going to be placed someplace. So the season is imminently beginning. Most people who live there, unless they're foreign people, do not have the luxury to be running around and fighting this thing all the time. As I said, community groups, you can see there's almost an ambivalence about how to approach what to do. The they thing that I mentioned, where there was a program of where to put everything, vanished. At the point where there had been the academic research to put over 100 windmills, place theoretically 100 windmills on Baros. 